Welcome to Australia and welcome to the Mount Panorama circuit for this, the the, uh, the resumption of the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Formula Renault series. We've had a week off, uh, but we are definitely not uh, easing our way back into things here. We are one of the toughest tracks on the iRacing service and we've got four races today around the 6.21 kilometre circuit with 23 corners. Well, hello everybody. Adam Baff here with Alex Simpson in the commentary box and on the cameras. Alex, um, I, I was, I was going to say, I hope you had a pleasant week, but um, it's not really been too pleasant, has it? We were racing in the Le Mans 24 hours at <laughs> the weekend. Yeah, busy old weekend to Le Mans, um, yeah, late nights and whatnot. And we're tech this morning, I um, mean, uh, much need for some sleep, I feel. <laughs> well, one person who's definitely not uh, sitting back and uh, watching the action of fall tonight is uh, Andrew Woodhouse, who um, say is coerced into getting in the car, but um, yeah, <laughs> Andrew Woodhouse, uh, yeah, you were with us with Le Mans at the weekend, and... Uh, Different, different car entirely you're having a go at tonight. Yeah, I thought we'd have a go. Help boost the old numbers. We'll see whether it, um, whether we manage to do anything. I don't think I will. I think I'll be at the back, but um, we're going to try and enjoy it. Well, uh, championship standings, we might as well run you through them, um, even though it is uh, pretty irrelevant considering the grid size that we've got here. But, uh, yeah, we have got two, um, well, one, one pro driver at the front uh, in Chambol at Bassi. He's currently second on the grid as I get my points up now. Leading the way in the championship standings uh, is... Load! Well, it, it is someone, but um, yeah. Uh, Alex, Chen Volabassi and Marcel Van Luzen are two of the quickest drivers in the series, and uh, they're proving that they're not too faced by the Baffer circuit so far. No, not at all. Having a bit of fun out there, and for some whatever reason, I'm not getting the pro standings come up on the overlay either. The AM championship and team championship are working, but uh, yeah, so... Oh, it's good to know that we're back with a hitch. <laughs> oh well, is everything going so far, right? <laughs> but, yeah, starts mean to go on. Uh, Martin Van Luzen leads the way in the points, I can tell you that. He's 20, uh, 24 points ahead of David Baker, who isn't here today. Uh, Jack Keefley in third, he's third in the, on the grid as well. Uh, Paul Denton is uh, fourth in the championship, championship standings, highest of the AMs. Samuel Lebert in fifth. Uh, he is not here tonight. Christian Rose isn't, isn't here either. No CQR presence on the grid. No, Christian Rose is here. Oh, Christian, uh, I can just see him. Yeah, there he is. Uh, he hasn't set a time though in qualifying. Um, Jos Honig in, uh, let's get the numbers right, seventh in the standings, eighth Stephen Baxter, ninth John Godfrey, and uh, tenth is Tom Depka, who was in uh, our race at the weekend, I think, in the Le Mans 24 hours. Uh, Paul Denton leads the way, as we were saying, in the AMS. Then uh, Christian Rose second with Jos Honig first, Stephen Baxter fourth, John Godfrey fifth. Uh, Tom Depka sixth, Josh Thompson seventh, who uh, is is here today. Uh, John McCutcheonson in eighth. Uh, he is here as well, along with uh, his teammate Kip Stevens, who has uh, just joined the session. He hasn't set a time though, so he's going to be at the back of the grid with you, Willie. And then uh, tenth, Rafe Cullinan. And in the team standings, uh, Faker Sim Sport Europe, um, nearly two thousand points ahead. So uh, the championship could be theirs even at this uh, midpoint stage of the season. Apex Racing UK. Well, I don't know if. Um, Oh, Martin Van Luzenor has now joined the UK team, so he'll still be scoring points for Not them. Sure, he's still in the academy team. There you go. So my um, so the BSR standings need to get updated. So yeah, uh, do we have a? Do we actually have um, an Apex UK? No, no one on the grid, grid today. There we go. Well, uh, I might as well. Do I count for that? Maybe. Who knows? No, Andy. you won't. As no. well, because obviously it's, you can only have so many changes in the season. So. Well, that's us done then. Well, <laughs> we can probably say that this is the the reformation of the Apex Racing TV team. Um, uh, so. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. We could, we could, yeah, we could. I mean, surely if all the drivers have left the series, then there's not a lot you can, uh, you can do. But you know, got to add some more people. Well, um, yeah, you may, may, who knows? You may even see me in the car uh, next week. Got to the um, point where we may as well make up the rules ourselves. I do. Um, Wondering. Anyway. Yeah, onto the grid. Uh, we haven't got too long left of the qualifying session. I doubt there's going to be too much change in the order. Probably around the back, about the back of the grid because. Um, it will all be sorted by I rating. Um, I can tell you uh, with you where you'll be starting in a minute. Uh, but yeah, Martin Van Luzen on a provisional pole. Chembol Abassi in second. Third is uh, Jack Keefley. Fourth is, uh, is Yannick Ongener, who was quickest in uh, the practice. Oh, was quickest in the practice session. He's now down the order a bit. Jos Honig in fifth. Uh, sixth, Paul Denton. Seventh, John McCutchinson. That win at Road America in the early season. Uh, his highlight. Uh, Stephen Baxter, eighth. Roy Viverke, ninth. Tenth is Rafe Cullinan. And then, as I quickly look at the timing screens, 
uh, to find out where you'll be starting. There we go. 11th, Josh Thompson. 12th, Kip Stevens. 13th is Andrew Woodhouse. There he is. And uh, Christian Rose has got a less eye rating than you, uh, Willie. So he's going to be starting in last in 14th position. I'm legitimately astonished by that. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what his eye rating is in a second. He's much better than me, but there we go. That's forming up on the grid then. Uh, we will have a 15-minute race for the opening race uh, to gauge how many laps we will have. And then, uh, yeah, we will have laps the rest of the race. I can tell you that Christian Rose's eye rating, uh, Andrew, is um, only a bit less than yours. This is 1,753. Ah, there we go. Okay. And then, Alex, uh, I presume it's going to be a battle royal at the front between um, Van Nuzelod and Chembol at Bassi for this, for this opening race. Yeah, I would think so. Um, those guys should lead the way and um, have a little um, little race and then the mid-pack really is just going to have a bit of fun in there as well so I think actually it should be quite an exciting race between the two little groups now, of course if you've never seen the Bathurst circuit before it really is a circuit of two halves you've got the uh, the very quick straights of the mountain straight which we're about to go up in a moment and the Conrod straight which runs back down on the final sector but in between those two massive straights you've got the very tight and twisty mountain section and probably the closest thing we've got to a street circuit on the iRacing service at the moment very punishing concrete walls uh, as you go up the hill plus uh, to go with that a massive uh, massive descent through the S's through Skyline and uh, Forest Elbow as well where uh, drivers will definitely get caught out if the tyres aren't up to temperature plus some good, plus some good slipstreaming as well but all that to look forward to then. Here we go. Race one of the day in the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Formula Renault. Green, green, green. Underway already. Martin Van Nuzenord gets a good jump away from the line. Looks like the Jack Keefe is going to try and get into third position. He does. Uh, but Chembol Abassi into second. Now let's go see how the drivers can handle the first corner. Good start from Van Nuzenord. There's already a bit of a breakaway happening with the front four. Uh, that's Van Luzenord, Bolabasi, Keefley and Ongana. Onik already getting left behind a bit and he's now going to go wheel to wheel, Alex, with his teammate Paul Denton as we go up the mountain strike. Yeah, Paul, good driver. I think uh, those guys are going to want to hold each other up too much here. They've got um, John Hutchinson behind them as well. So, but, um, uh, sorry, there's Joss and then uh, John, so they won't want to uh, sacrifice anything through the first lap. It's important to try and hold on to the front pack just for a little bit of draft. Say that oh, who made the mistake? Someone made the mistake. Keithley, Keithley. yes. Ongan has gone through. That was at uh, the cutting, uh, just at the uphill left-hander. And, uh, yeah, that's how that was Ongan through into third position. Probably for Andrew Woodhouse. Andrew Woodhouse, our commentary colleague, has crashed. Oh, and it's a big one. Uh, well done, Woody. That one lasted long. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> You're going to do it, mate. Do it, still. It looks like a bump. Yeah, it looks like a bump was hit oh. there. Uh, just on board with uh, Jim as was coming down the mountain for the first time as well. Oh no, Paul Denton. Going Denton. through there, the car has a habit of locking the rears around, but um, yeah, him and Martin going at it. Paul Denton has crashed, uh, so he too joins Andrew Woodhouse with a lot of damage to the car. Uh, this And a problem for Josh Thompson as well, Alex. Josh Thompson, who had a good start to the race. What has happened to him? He's towed back to the pits, and it looks like a problem at Forest Elbow. Oh no, it's, a, a, it's a tough track, it's very demanding, you know, you can't can't make any mistakes here you know if you make a mistake you're done simple as that and we've seen that on the first lap so drivers just struggling a little bit and uh, yep that'll um that'll wake them up for the rest of the meeting that's for sure okay, it looks like we'll it was like a bit see exactly what happened to just just watching it now on a replay you can hear cars already hitting the wall that was denton making his mistake uh josh is tucked up behind someone does he just get the braking run oh, i'll tell you what he just dives in on mccutchinson um I don't really know what he's doing there, to be honest. You're not going to get by there. And, yeah. Wow. Just, uh, of course he's retired, so, yeah. Well, uh, it Maybe is... John just caught him out breaking a bit early or something like that and had to try to take some avoiding action. I don't know, but, yeah, just seems a bit, a bit risky to me. And that might be the last we see of Josh Thompson for the night. Uh, if his messages on the chat are anything to go by anyway. Uh, Martin Van Nuzenord leads the way at the end of the first lap, 1.3 second lead over Chen Bolabasi. Uh, Yannick Ongana uh, further two seconds behind him in third, so a good start from him, uh, upper position. Fourth is Jack Keefley, then Jos Honig a long, long way back in uh, fifth position. Um, and then it's John McCutcheon in sixth, Rafe Cullen in seventh, eighth is Roy Viverke, ninth is Stephen Baxter, and uh, tenth is Kip Stevens, who's gained two positions really out of everyone crashing off around him. Credit to Andrew Woodhouse, I think he has made it back to the pits without towing, so 
Um, that will keep him on the lead lap. Uh, I don't know if he gets a new car, actually. No, he doesn't. So uh, Pairs, that's it. Yep. Yeah, he, he might actually uh, suffer a bit here. But if he stays just one lap down, he will be eligible for the reverse grid pole. Pretty much done with Jens. Oh, that's like that. Um, yeah, we'll be starting in the back then for the second race. Um, I was up about four spots there as well, but never mind. Was it just the bump on the exit of the, of the yeah. cussing there? I didn't have a quick look at what happened again, but it just seemed to... It was going quite nicely and then it just went away from me in the middle of the corner and then I uh, had to save it. And of course, what happens when you try and save it here on our racing is you end up in the other wall. I think if you try to save anything on iRacing, it doesn't usually go too well. Uh, that was what happened to me anyway at Le Mans at the weekend. Um, especially if you get caught by surprise. But one person um, who isn't surprising us at the moment, he nearly goes into the wall, is uh, Martin Van Luzen. He's just completed lap two of the race. A uh, small error there. That might allow Chen Bolabasi to close in a bit. Even with that error, uh, Martin was still, um, still a second quicker than Chem on that last lap. A uh, really dominating proceedings in the early going of race one. Uh, Yannick Ongana in third. Fourth, Jack Keefley. Fastest lap of the race from Keefley as well. So showing that he wants to get back towards the podium positions after uh, that mistake early on. This mountain section they're going up now, Alex. Um, we've seen um, quite a few incidents here in the early going. Andrew Wood, uh, uh, Woody, one of uh, one of the examples as well, as long as as well as uh, Paul Denton, who's still going, and uh, Josh Thompson as well. Uh, the drivers they they can't think about trying to get any overtakes done around the circuit. They just want to make sure that they can get the car back down to uh, the Conrad's track. That's the important thing. That's the tough. You know that mountain is the tough part. That seems to be where everybody loses it. So. Absolutely uh, critical, just at the top of the uh, mountain to do that. Can I just point out that um, that Vegas Sports still with five cars in this race as well, so constant. Oh, it's a mistake by Keithy. Just catches oh. the curb. Um, oh, he's in a really vulnerable place right now. Needs to get out of the way. Cars are coming. That's his teammate and, um, going through. He's okay. Well, we've seen big incidents in uh, various BSR series in that part of the circuit, especially when the drivers are caught blind. Uh, just that uh, Lee Berridge. Uh, when that all transpired at uh, Skyline back in the winter series. And uh, yeah, Jack Keefe, very lucky they didn't, didn't pick up any damage from that either. The car looks pretty clean after that that moment, uh, but he has a lost a position to his teammate Jos Honig now and finds himself in fifth. Just all saying that um, Faker got obviously the whole contingency out there. Um, and they I still do. So, um, good. Um, Good showing by them, you know, uh, Jos Honig's done a great job in um, keeping that team sort of motivated and pushing forward and, you know, they're definitely looking like uh, the strongest team for this championship now as the uh, series goes on. They could be rewarded with a lot of money and um, yeah. prizes for their their loyalty and their diligence. More than can be said for a lot of people. But um, fantastic effort for, to have four cars still going. Um, at this point in the season after everything that's gone on is, is fantastic, it's great. They're all getting better as well. Well, that's five, they've got five. Five? So there's, there's Yannick, there's Jos, there's Kit Jack. Oh, it's Yannick. There's Baker Steven. Well, sorry. And there's uh, Paul Denton, yeah. So ah, uh, Yannick come in and sorry. replaced uh, one of the drivers, I'm not sure who it was now. But, yeah, so he's done a great job uh, Nash, just in keeping Nash that team. Nash drove for them at the start of the season? Uh, sorry, say again, mate, you're very quiet. James Nash that drove for them oh, at the start, it was, was yeah, it? it was Nash, yeah. Well, consistency is the key and you've got to be in it to win it and uh, all, all the cliches getting thrown out now and uh, and my mind turns back to some of the BSR teams that uh, did similar things back in the day back when we first started covering the series uh, was it Team O uh, back in season six that they made sure they had every single driver on the grid uh, the likes of Stefan Hoog, had Jerome Kaiser in there in the mix as well and that's what ended that's what resulted in them winning the team's championship, even though it was Apex Racing TV with Wojciech Savidovic that won the championship that season. Uh, they were still able to take the, uh, the majority of the prize money which gets handed out in this BSR series. And uh, they're making sure they do that again. Anyway, yeah, Alex doing a great job as well. He's not really dropped back too far from the leaders and we honestly thought that he perhaps would. Um, and it'd be his teammate Jack who takes up the challenge, but um, yeah, great strong job. Only four seconds behind. We're six and just over six and a half minutes of this race left to go. So 
um, proving that he knows this circuit well and I think this track is all about your familiarization with it and having the confidence to push going up and down the mountain. No real battles going on out there at the moment though, um, Adam has just died down all of a sudden. Yeah, it is a shame. This is, will be something we will see, unfortunately, during the four races today because there's so little fit cars in the field. Of course, the reverse grid will help generate a bit of excitement. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, uh, not too much transpiring in this race so far. Six minutes to go in race one of the day in the, uh, the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Formula uh, Renault Championship here on Apex Racing TV. Jim Bollabassi just uh, letting Marcel Van Lusenmoor know that he's still here with the fastest lap of the race on the, uh, the last tour of the circuit, 201.842. Uh, overcast conditions in the early going, and uh, yeah, we're setting some pretty good lap times here, just outside the two-minute barrier on this uh, Mount Panorama circuit. And the gap between Van Nusselen and Cembal Abbasi, just 2.7 seconds as uh, they go over Brock's skyline for lap five of the race. Two cars in the pits at the moment, both two very, both very mangled cars. Kip Stevens and Andrew Woodhouse, league admin, league commentator. Um, I'll be hoping for better things in the second race. Uh, Paul Denton still going with a very heavy damaged uh, Baker Simsport car. And uh, the closest battle we really have on circuit at the moment, if you can call it that, I think is uh, Jack Keefley and uh, Jos Honig. And uh, they are about 1.2 seconds apart as they go down the straight. In terms of slipstream, Alex, we'll probably um, we'll hopefully see more of it in the remaining three races, but what's the, what's the gap that you need to get to in order to get that toe off the car in front? Yeah, half a second is your sweet spot. Get within that 0.5, just under, um, just under 0.6, and then you'll pick it up, basically. Um, not much when you're that far out, but obviously it's the more you close in, you can get quite a good draft sort of three tenths to two tenths of a second back and you'll definitely see people be able to make moves down the uh, down the main streets. Okay, well, if, only the, if only the draft sweet spot was half a second in our 24 hours of Le Mans race so we wouldn't have so many cars getting past us uh, down the Morsan. Uh, Jackie Flea though is getting closer to Jos Honig. Uh, the gap is slowly coming down. The gap is now eight tenths of a second. It was just over a second a uh, lap ago. And uh, yeah, last times last time around 2033 for Honig, 203 dead for Keefley. And that fake sim sport car of Keefley is slowly closing the gap. Uh, the, the, in terms of the points between these two, uh, Jack Keefley currently sits in, uh, in, in third position in the standings. Jos Honig in seventh. Of course, Honig is fighting uh, for his, his, uh, his AM championship. So we might not see Honig go all out trying to defend his position here. Yeah, I, d I don't know. Um, I'm not even sure Jack will, uh, will attack him that much, will he? Or will he, if he gets just a run, will he just a simple pass, probably go through, or will um, he let Jos, um, Jos take this? Or will uh, Jos in return just move over and let his teammate go? I don't know, because um, if there's going to be one driver who can win this championship for um, Fake Sim Sport Europe, it's going to be Jack, I think. He's the one that's definitely showing the most consistent pace to um, compete with the likes of um, Martin and Jem and if um, he comes back like uh, Pete as well because he's still acquired enough points um, and race wins to turn up for the showdown so there's a few drivers like that so I remember that. Under three minutes to go then here comes uh, Jack Keefe looking to the inside our way through there maybe a little look at the inside and indeed he does and yeah, uh, yeah pretty Sonic orchestrated move that one so Keefley through into fourth position, new fastest lap of the race again uh, from Chen Bassi. He's definitely not allowing Martin van Nusenor to go away with it. He may allow him to have the win, uh, but he's definitely not allowing him to have the uh, the triple crown of pole position, fastest lap and race win. Bolabasi definitely trying to get that fastest lap honour with a 2.01725. We're getting very close uh, to the to the two minute barrier these overcast conditions Alex are they the perfect conditions to try and get that lap time in oh yeah absolutely that's what you want the cooler the track the better for raw pace just uh, the tyres the way they are at the moment just uh, going to get a whole load more grip out of them um, something that needs um, just minor uh, minor tweaks I feel now definitely getting better um, updates the time model with the um, with the lock up 
um, on the contact patch only rather than the whole tyre tire surface made quite a big difference so good to see the, um, the development How long to go? Uh, Martin Van Lusen now on his penultimate lap Amazing the speed they carry through the, uh, the S's down the hill Just one small error and uh, that will be it for these cars of course There is not much in terms of defence for these compared to the likes of the Kia Optima or the uh, sports cars that you have seen on uh, various uh, iRacing channels during the uh, the weekend. And there's, there's a small hit and the suspension will be broken and will end up like Andrew Woodhouse and Kip Stevens and Josh Thompson all in the pit lane and um, a possible zero points for the race meeting. Going through uh, the chase now, 250 kilometres per hour, uh, the Formula Renault reaching there. Maybe even a bit more than that if he had a toe in front of him. Lucien on now on his way to the final corner. Could he set a fastest lap of the race on lap seven? We're going to find out now as he goes through the final corner. Is he going to try and beat Chembol at Bassi's 201.725? Through the final corner he goes there through Maurice. Line 201355. That is a new fastest lap of the race. So Van Lusenor, can Chembol at Bassi better it? He nope. can't. 201.7, so... And do something on this final lap as he got something in the bag there. But Martin Valuzano does a pretty good lap and there to um, get a 201 354 late on in the race. Not too much trouble for him, and he has just taken the white flag now. So this will be the final lap. We're running through the top 10. In fact, they're the only two, they're the only 10 cars that are still in the race. But if Van Luzenod leads Chembol at Bassi by three seconds, and it's Yannick Ongener in third position. Looks like he's going to get a position in this opening race. Jack Keefley in fourth. 5th, Jos Honig, 6th, John McCutchinson, 7th, Rafe Cullinan, who's uh, got Stephen Baxter a little bit close for comfort there in the late stages of the race. Then Roy Viverke is in ninth and in last uh, with that heavy damage. And uh, looking set for reverse grid pole, it is uh, Paul Denton who's just going into the chase for the, final, uh, for the penultimate time. That's around losing all then. Negotiating Brock Skyline. A little bit of a battle going on. Ralph Cullinan and Stephen Baxter, they're getting a bit closer together. Um, maybe on the final lap, they're only just going up the hill now, so we'll keep an eye on that one, but where's Martin? He's not just going through Forest's elbow. The final time, the man who's taken so many victories in Formula Renault's over the last few seasons, both in the official series and here in the BSR Formula Renault, looks set to take the race one victory. He won the opening race of the season back in Sebring in late January, early February. And he looks like he's going to take the win here in mid-June as we restart the season after our week 13 break. He's just going to get through this chicane now after the chase and then just go through Murray's corner, the final left-hander, the 90-degree left-hander, and he will see the chequered flag and take that opening race victory of the day. Martin van Lusenor, the Dutchman, goes for the final corner now. The chequered flag is ready, and he wins race one of the day here at Mount Panorama Bathurst. Sets a 201.398, just a few hundredths of a second off beating his fastest lap. Chembol Abassi takes second and Yannick Ongener takes third. There's Baxter, he's got a bit of a run. Don't think he's going to get a move on to um, uh, Rafe into the um, oh, to the chase. He's got a good exit here though, might be able to get it. He's gone, opted for the outside. It'll be tough to um, complete the move in the final corner. Murray's so, so tr tricky. Uh, and he can't quite do it. So uh, Rafe's the one who's going to be able to hold on but only just. Well, then takes that seventh place back to an eighth. And then we're just waiting for Roy Viverke and Paul Denton. Viverke just negotiating that final corner now. Paul Denton's still got a bit of a way to go. He's just going through Forest Elbow now for the final time. And then he'll be on his way to take 10th position and that lucrative pole position for race two. But um, yeah, as far as things go, Alex, that's probably what we were expecting in that opening race. Yeah, I think so. Um, usually the way it runs, isn't it? The, um, the packs just sort of spread apart a little bit. Um, generally, everybody's pace sort of um, is there or thereabouts, so I'm not surprised. Uh, Martin and uh, Andrew Woodhouse, can we expect to see you in the in the car for the second race? Oh, yeah, certainly. See how far we can get this time. Uh, and as they go through the final corner now, Benton, take a sim sport car. Somehow is Thompson. pointing it straight on. Yes, and I don't think Thompson's going to be back, so... I mean, that's, that's something, I guess. Peter, yeah, a proper driver there in Josh Thompson. Finished a lap ahead of him. Um, <laughs> there you go. Well, um, well I just, we haven't, as we haven't heard from you um, uh, from you much, um, will you be able to do us the honour of reading out the, 
Results from the opening rounds. Oh, go on, since you asked. Why not? Uh, Martin Van Luzno takes the first round of the evening. Uh, time of 16 minutes, 17 seconds. Chen Bolatbasi, 3.2 behind him. And then Yannick Ongana, uh, inside 10 seconds. That's a very, very good effort from him. The Faker Sim Sport driver. Jack Keithley in fourth with Jos Honig in fifth. John McCutcheon in sixth, seventh. Rafe Cullinan, eighth. Stephen Baxter, ninth. Roy Verke and tenth. Paul Denton, as uh, Adam mentioned. He will be on reverse grid pole. Kip Stevens retired early, along with uh, myself and Josh Thompson. And Christian Rose actually did not take the start despite doing the practice session earlier. Very good. Um, no reverse good wheel, I'm afraid, because um, it's a bit of a certainty. And uh, yeah, Paul Denton on the reverse grid for the second race. So um, yeah, we'll take a break here on Apex Racing TV. We'll be back at the Mount Panorama circuit here in Burst for the second race of the day in the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Formula Renault Championship.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Welcome back to Apex Racing TV here. We're back at the Mount Panorama Circuit in Australia for the second race of the day in the iRacing MSA. British Sim Racers Formula Renault Championship. Marcel van Lusenor takes the win, took the win in the first race of the day. Chambal Abassi second and uh, Yannick Onegan taking the final podium position. We now have a reverse grid to contend with and Alex Simpson, that means that uh, Paul Denton, who finished 10th, he's going to be on the pole position for uh, race two. Um, be good for Paul. Obviously, Paul made that mistake, didn't he, in the um, early goings of the last race? So, uh, definitely a good driver. So, it'd be good to see him um, a good shot at uh, maybe a, a win in this one. It's going to be very, very difficult. Martin and Jim look very, very quick, I have to say. Um, and with the smaller grid sizes that we've got out there, it's just, uh, you know, um, they're going to fly through that down that straight. Yeah, not too long to go in the session now, and then uh, we will get uh, set to go. Once again, overcast conditions, so we'll see some uh, good laps, I think. We could maybe even break the two-minute barrier. We have seen some setups being uh, thrown around with the potential to do so. Um, and yeah, two-minute lap on uh, this circuit in the final runners wouldn't be too, wouldn't be too shabby, Alex. Uh, no, I don't think so at all. Um, sorry, a couple of messages just coming in there as well, so apologies for that. But um, yeah, I think, um, a good one. Sorry, do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay. Um, yeah, I've just got a few moments left in the warm session. Time to tell you that um, this week we've got, of course, the return of the BSRTC. They are heading to Montreal uh, for their race. Uh, hopefully we should have enough grid spaces for them all. Um, and yeah, they'll be back after their week off. Uh, that should be interesting. Uh, we don't Where know else are they going? Oh, they're going to Montreal. Cool. Yeah, that'll be good. Race. And uh, yeah, I don't know if the Porsches will be there with them. We'll wait and see. And then at the weekend, uh, Friday, we have the, uh, the Oceana uh, Formula One series. Uh, that's heading into its second race meeting of the season. And uh, yeah, the usual stuff over the weekend. Sunday, uh, we will see the Club 73 Touring Car Championship uh, still going strong. And uh, yeah, Monday as well, uh, the return of the Ritmatech Sports Car Series after uh, an interesting race last night at Watkins Glen, that has to be said, uh, where we ended up having a half an hour sprint after uh, what was originally billed as a one hour race. Still a good half hour, that was for sure. Yeah, it was. Definitely. Um, we get more of the same of that uh, in a few weeks' time. But uh, yeah, we've got the, the here and now at Bathurst. And uh, we'll get race two underway momentarily. It'll be interesting to see what Martin van Nusenor can do from the back of the grid, although it'd be a, a 13 or so car grid for this second race. Uh, I can tell you that Josh Thompson has not reappeared for this second race of the day. Uh, I think he's probably not going to be back for the rest of the night after uh, what unfolded on the opening lap of race one. Race uh, which quick complete, I think. <laughs> I think that was a, yes. Um, uh, a rage quit worthy of ultimate team on FIFA, uh, you could say. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to see Thompson back for the rest of the evening. I don't know, actually know where the BSR Formula Renault Series is heading next week, actually, because uh, the, uh, the calendar on their website stops at uh, week 13, but let's run you through the grid. Paul Denton on the pole, Roy Verke second, Stephen Baxter third, Rafe Cullinan fourth, John McCutchinson in fifth, sixth, Jos Honig, seventh, Jack Keefley, uh, eighth is Yannick Ongen, and ninth is Chen Bassi, and tenth is our race one winner, Martin Van Lusenord. And starting at the back, it's uh, Kip Stevens and Andrew Woodhouse. Just trying to quickly tell you before the grid takes shape as to um, where we're going to be. We're going to be at Zazuka next week. Suzuka, well that's a good one. And we'll see if the driver, some of the drivers uh, can get further than a third of the lap. Apparently it is like racing on ice, going to Chambal at Bassi. But uh, he has been red hot on the track today. And so is Martin Van Lusenors. We'll see what progress they can make as we are now just waiting for the lights to get the second race underway. Green, green, green! Very long hold and we're away. 
Good start from Denton. Faverke might be already under pressure from Baxter as we go into the first corner. He's looking up the inside into Hell Corner. That's almost close to contact. That's contact. And around they both go. Well, Denton's got damage. Faverke's gone off. Someone speared off to the right. That is Faverke. And um, someone else rejoining at the back of the grid as well. That's Yannick Yannick as well. Yeah, he had some big problems. Everybody's struggling out there with the uh, tyres not coming up to um, pressure. Denton flying away. 1.9 seconds clear. So good start from him. McCutchinson and Keith Lee into turn one, very very close Keith he can't quite put his nose up the inside so um, Hutchinson just sweeps around the outside, nice and Losing all up to fifth position, he's just got past Jen Balabasi as we go into the cutting, trying to see if uh, Balabasi might have a bit of damage actually on the, oh no, the front wing still looks okay uh, so that is all cool from him Andrew Whithouse has made it further than he has in race one, uh, so, and he's up four positions as well, so a good start from last for the, uh, the BSRTC race winner go from it the for the first time yeah Paul Denton got a very nice and healthy advantage and John McCutchinson at the moment is going to be holding back the likes of uh, Rafe Cullinan and Jack Keefley as we go through the assets yeah that's just what Paul wants really doesn't it a nice little breakaway I mean we're only eight lap race so um, if uh, he can carry on pulling away from Hutchinson here oh no it'll be um, it'll be good what's happened to Andrew Whithouse and Jos Honig they've both collided at um at the S's. Let's see what happened here. Andrew Wishouse might be the instant. Oh, he spins and then Honig just goes into him. And uh, Honig's oh, not going to be tall about happy about that. Wishouse has spun again at Forest Elbow as well, so. Um, oh, damaged, I would think. Oh, God, just snaps on him there as well, just seeing that on a replay. Very crazy. Just. Looks like the driver's was... keeping out of the way, though. Looks like Woody's still able to survive. Keith Lee's through into second place. The car's relatively undamaged in Andrew Wood's house. But yeah, into the final corner. Oh, Martin got such a great run. Look at that. Two cars coming off of Murray's. It's going to be second place by the time he reaches oh, no. the oh, number dear. one. Comes right across on uh, McCutchinson. Squeezes him in there and uh, gets up. Great, great move. Saw that one um, opening up. Well, that is the confidence of a man who's leading the championship and has won so many Formula Renault official series. Here we go, though. Three cars battling away. Cullinan, Keithley and McCutchinson. McCutchinson looks like he's going to be the loser. No, he's not. He's fighting up the inside and locks the brakes and somehow avoids the wall. I thought he was, a, I thought he was on his way to certain, uh, to certain retirement there, Alex, but somehow he managed to loop that car back in the right direction. Yeah, very lucky. Um, also, um, the, the guys fighting him were lucky that they weren't involved in it. So, uh, I feel Paul, um, Paul Denton needed a few more laps from Hutchinson to hold these guys up. Now that it's Martin behind him, it's just a, a matter of time. Well, camera, uh, the iRacing cameraman was a bit happier than uh, a bit happy what happened there because it looked like he was heading straight for him. But yeah, the gap is 1.1. It was 1.5 about uh, 20 seconds ago. Uh, it's now under a second. Uh, that is how quickly things are unravelling here. Uh, for Paul Denton as we go into Forest Elbow. Marcel van Lusenhoek may inconceivably have this lead by the end of the lap. That's how quick he is in this Apex Academy car as we head down Back to the well field. Down there in 8th uh, place, just recovering back to speed now. Oh yeah, oh, the, dark, the car's damaged again. What happened to Paul Denton in race 1 for Stephen Baxter? Oh, he needs to get out of the way. There goes uh, Kip Stevens through. Uh, what about van Lusenhoek as we go through the chase? Up down to seven tenths of a second. He hasn't been able to make too many inroads for its final sector, of course, because it's mostly straight. Uh, Van Lusenor should have the gap under half a second, though, by the time we come around to complete the, the second lap of the race. He's into the draft now, so he'll get that run oh, up, no. up the hill. It's Problems Woodhouse. It's the Woodhouse, I feel. Oh, dear, it's a big one. A very big one. It's Stephen Baxter. We just saw what happened to him earlier. Oh, and I think it might be uh, Andrew Woodhouse, a massive innocent victim here. Well, Stephen Baxter was trying to get the car back to the pits, Alex. We saw him doing that earlier. And, um, oh dear, he hits the inside, the outside concrete wall. And Andrew Woodhouse tries to avoid him. Oh, no. And uh, that is the end of Baxter's oh. race. Uh, Andrew Woodhouse probably can make it back to the pits, but again, that will probably be terminal damage, and uh, that will be the end of his race, too. We're about to see a move here as well, as I'm just watching it back on replay with um, Martin going to get the run I think on um, Paul Denton moving himself up and into the lead up the hill using the draft and that extra momentum 
very easily done. 201, 967. That's only two temps off his personal best in, in a race one, actually, Marcel Van Nusselo. So he's hit the ground running straight away here in the second race of the day. And uh, Stephen Baxter just sending his apologies to uh, Andrew Whithouse on the chat. And uh, Whithouse will have, give it another go in race three. But uh, Jack Keefe now, the next car to bear down on Paul Denton. Two teammates, both driving for Faker Sims for Europe, both atop the team's championship. A little lock up there from Denton into Forest Elbow. And now Jack Keefe is within, within that sweet spot of half a second. We'll see what kind of speed he can get down, down the Conrad straight on. Yeah, let's take a look as uh, bring up the graphic. Comparison, you can see quite considerable, about six, seven kilometers an hour faster and gaining the closer he gets as well. Pulls out of the slipstream, moves himself up and into um, second place. Clear before the breaking point as well. Keefley up to second position now, however, they are now two and a half seconds behind. Ongana versus Chembol at Bassi going through the chase. Looks like Ongana might have just got the move done on the Turkish driver who. Races in the iRacing Road Pro Series. I mean, World Championship Grand Prix Series. What am I on about? It's going to be close. Almost a bit of bump drafting there. Don't want that in a Formula Renault. It's bad enough in a GTE. Tim's got a tiny little bit of wing damage, so you were right earlier, um, Adam. And okay. I think that's what's slowing him up a little bit. I did Struggling see. somewhat, sort of two seconds a lap off the pace what he was the last time compared to everybody else lapping very, very similar sort of times. Yeah, I thought I did see something, but uh, yeah, you can, it's pretty obvious now. You can see the damage in front of the, uh, the Formula Renault car there of a uh, champ. Uh, he's ducking about, trying to get some toe, I think, or maybe just try and work out the handling of the car down the mountain straight. He's now down to uh, seventh position. Pro driver. Going into, uh, uh, we know all of what the frustrations are when the car is just slow in a straight line, but handling okay. The best part of... Um, 22 and a half hours oh. Le Mans <laughs> with a car somewhere between 10 and 20 kilometers an hour slower in a straight line is very frustrating so it was an ongoing struggle we did overcome <laughs> it in the, and we did manage to complete 24 hours yeah it that's just, it it's some achievement but um just taking part of the count <laughs> oh more damage for Jim hits the wall so I'm off of him but Hutchinson and uh, Rafe Cullinan very very close Indeed they are. Cullinan in, in uh, fourth position now, McCutcheonson in fifth. McCutcheonson who won that epic race at Road America back when we had uh, grid, grid sizes a lot bigger than this um, uh, earlier in the season. And uh, doing reasonably well here, on for a top five at the moment. Quite a way ahead of Yannick Ongana and he doesn't have to hold, back, hold on for too many more laps. We are just at the halfway distance in this second race of the day. John McCutcheonson probably just close enough to pick up some form of slipstream off the rear end of and then they're going through the uh, the chase. The question is in driving for Pro Sim, that green and red and white livery Formula Renault. Rafe Cullinan with that independent privateer livery. 201454 for Martin Van Nusen or new fast slap as McCutchinson oh, has a little locker. Yeah, just lost the car a little bit going in. Had to um, get out of it somewhat and correct the car and uh, set himself 2.1 seconds back. He just got into the draft as well. So I'm kicking himself a little bit there. Credit to Jack Keefley, he's not slapping too sl too much slower than uh, Martin Van Lusenold. It was only four tenths of a second slower on that previous lap. And uh, yeah, definitely giving him a run for his money. The same with Chembol at Bassi in race one uh, when uh, he was in second place. It's Martin Van Lusenold, even though he is relatively comfortable at the front of the race, he can't afford to be too complacent uh, in uh, these late stages of the second race. And then uh, top 10. Once again, we've only got 10 cars left in the field. Another two retirements in this second race. Marcel Van Lusenord leads Jack Keefley by 2.5 seconds. And it's a four second gap back to Paul Denton in third. Rafe Cullinan is three seconds behind him. And then it's a 1.5 second gap back to Mark John McCutcheonson in fifth. Yannick Ongana is only 1.9 seconds behind McCutcheonson now in sixth. Chembal Labas is slowly falling back now. He's 2.4 seconds behind Ongana in seventh. Then uh, 18 seconds back to Roy Verke, who had that spin on the opening lap after starting second on the grid. And then 10 seconds behind him is Kip Stevens and uh, Jos Honig, uh, who is a last at the moment, 11 seconds behind him. And the two retirements, we saw how they both ended up in the pits. Andrew Woodhouse and uh, Stephen Baxter.
Everybody well, separated it. apart again now, so just having a quick look down the live timing table just to see what's going on, but gap's sort of one point something odd seconds. Um, it's the closest we've got. I think um, maybe we might see uh, Yannick Ongola and um, John McCutchinson come together. That should be a good little battle, definitely. Uh, Yannick a lot quicker than um, McCutchinson out there. Yeah, we'll see uh, a clear representation of that as they come through the final corner now. John McCutchinson just going through uh, the 90 degree left and does a 2.03.5. Oh, not a bad lap there, but Ongana does a 2.02.4 as a second quicker. Um, and uh, he'll be closing in. Martin van Luzenord was only just a hundredth of a second off setting a new uh, fastest lap of the race on that last lap as well. Shows that he's still pushing on. Uh, not just half a second away now from a two minute lap. Maybe we could see that by the end of this second race. 23 degrees air temperature here in New South Wales. Uh, 23 degrees track temperature as well, which is probably as cool as we're going to get here in Australia. Martin van Luzenord now, Alex. He's just heading through one of the best parts of the circuit. Maybe we can go on board with uh, the championship leader. Do that. Fenway Park now, there's Brock Skyler, look at the way he throws it at these S's, total commitment in the grip of the car and the handling as well, there's the dipper, that downhill left hander and through we go, up over the crest and into Forest Elbow, the car gets a little bit light there but he's able to keep it under control, he negotiates that left hander with ease and onto the Conrad straight he goes again. It feels a whole lot more complicated than the Kia, but that's probably because it takes a little bit longer to negotiate it there. Martin Van Luzenor just negotiating that second half of the lap with ease. Yeah, no some problems. I'll tell you, this is a great part of the circuit as well, very underestimated, but um, very technical just to get the line right there and get on the power as soon as possible. Drive off there flat out. But uh, yeah, lovely fast flowing section. Murray is very, very tricky. We'll quickly see if this is a new fastest lap, then we'll check back in in the Cutchinson Ongana battle. Over the line goes Martin Van Luzenor, 201 302, fastest lap in the race. No surprises there after we saw the way he was doing that second half of the lap. McCutchinson versus Ongana then. In fact, it's very Cullinan in the mix as well. McCutchinson to the outside, but spins, collects Cullinan. That might be a bit of damage. It doesn't look like it, to be fair. On ra oh no, the front wing is severely battered there. Yeah, and maybe the rear wing as well. well. So, all three. <laughs> well, there <you laughs> damage go. there, not good. Buy one, get one um, free there. The deal there on offer by John McCutchinson. Uh, hasn't helped him. He's um, he's uh, had to uh, fork out two positions to have to sit in place. Uh, he might even actually... He's actually come out the best out of all that, Alex, hasn't he? Yeah, <laughs> the, front, the front wing is, is still looking pretty respectable there, and so is the rear wing. So he's going to go back up the inside of Ongana into Griffin's bend at turn two. And um, the pedigree signs on the outside. Top dog there by uh, John McCutchinson. And that's a back, that's a back into the top five as well. And under Rafe Cullinan might be struggling a little bit now with that front wing damage. We need some Jim's dog Oh god, yeah. He's going to be um, getting out the pet shower though at the end. <laughs> uh, that's it, you win. For those, in the, for those that don't know, those were two teams that were represented in our uh, Le Mans 24 hour race uh, at the weekend. Um, he did finish ahead of Jim's dog wash though. Which um which I don't know if it's a good which is a is a thing to be proud of or not, but here we go. Through Forest Elbow again. This, these three are the closest three on the track at the moment. As they go through Forest Elbow, Cullinan's made a right mess of that uh, left hander. It could be at the mercy of McCutchinson here, who's a lot more aerodynamically efficient car at his hands. Here he comes. Best positions all back, thank you very much. <laughs> Good work. The, the damage to the rear wing there. That looks all too familiar, boys, doesn't it? That does. I was just about to bring that up. Yeah, that rear wing. Going through the corner now. Um, Martin Van Dusen not able to set the new fastest lap on that lap as uh, we get the white flag to start the final lap of race two. Um, McCutchinson now up into fourth position, but then he writes, makes a right dog's breakfast of that final corner. And Ray Cullinan has to take uh, evasive action there. And Cullen then takes that fourth place back as we start the last lap. But now he makes a right mess of the first corner. 
pretty entertaining stuff going on here. Now Cullinan's going to slot back in and get the slipstream. Don't rule out Yannick Ongana here, even with that front wing damage, which resembles a 2004 Williams at the, at the moment. As they go up the hill, or down the hill and back up it, into Griffin's bent turn two, up the inside goes Ongana. Cullinan goes from fourth to sixth in a straight. And uh, that's not gone at all well. However, every car has a silver lining. If he stays in that position, he will be uh, on the second row, on the third row of the grid, I should say, for... Uh, the third race of the day. On the hill they go. That's the Fujitsu sponsorship. Oh dear! Uh, but who's going to be smelling the sweet scent of victory? Maybe that's not the, the best um, adjectives to use, but the inside goes Cullen and into, into the skyline, into the S's and uh, he takes that position back and a little lock up there as well from Cullinan as they negotiate uh, the dipper on their way to uh, Forest Elbow again. But Alex, here comes Martin Van Lusenort. Perfect, uh, perfect drive again and really mastering these reverse grids, albeit with the smaller grid sizes. Yeah, that's it. I wonder if tonight will be four in four. We still haven't seen any driver in the series do it yet. So, um, won the first two, shown us that you can do it from the very back. So, just maybe. Okay. Pick a flag, Martin van Lusenord makes it two out of two. Jack Keefley in second position. Third is going to be Paul Denton. A good job there from the pole sitter, but it's Ongana versus Pullinen into the in, into the chase. Ongana runs out wide. There'll be a bit of understeer going on there, I'm sure, as uh, Cullinan weaving about a bit. Is he going to try a last-ditch manoeuvre into the final corner? A little lock-up there from Ongana, but it's going to be fifth position for him. Cullinan, who started the lap in fourth, Go end up finishing in sixth. Next up is Chembol at Bassi. Picked up that early damage on the opening lap. He's going to get seventh position. That will be uh, a good thing though because he will be ending up near the front for race three. And Roy Verke, who started on the front row, is just going to come through and take eighth position now after starting on the front row. And uh, Kip Stevens with a relatively clean Prosim car is going to come up. Is going to come round and take a ninth with Jos Honig, who is uh, just on his way towards the chase now taking that final position in 10th and will be a reverse grid pole. Well, at least I end up putting Yoss on pole position. <laughs> there you go. Oh, well, yeah, I do apologise. Your thoughts on um, the Stephen Baxter thing? It looked like, did the spotter say go left? Or? No, I think I, I should have gone right all along, but I didn't. Well, developed a little too slowly for me, I think. But um, not his fault. No, he can do. The car's, the car's knackered. So, um, yeah. And um, really do about that. It, Chem's right though; he's he's very slippery out there. It's tough. What the conditions will throw up for race three? So yeah, Andrew, um, take us through the results for race two. Uh, Martin Van Lusnod wins again, uh, two from two. Jack Keithley in second place. Paul Denton third. John McCutchinson in fourth. Yannick Ongana in fifth. We saw him fending off uh, Rafe Cullinan at the end. Chembal at Bassi only seventh. With Roy Verke eighth. 9th Kip Stevens, 10th Jos Honig, 11th Stephen Baxter, and 12th is uh, Andrew Woodhouse. And get better. I don't think you were last in race one, were you? Well, I, I was. I was 13th. I was 13th in race one, 12th this time. There's improvement there, gentlemen. You were you were ahead of Josh Thompson as well in. I was, one. but he's gone now, so that's that over with. Yeah. Um. <laughs> only way is up, and all that. Oh well, it is. We'll see. We'll try our and best. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens in race three, which is coming up in just a few moments here on Apex Racing all right. TV. The car felt all right, so hopefully we can um, get a few laps in. Everybody so, yeah, because uh, how many laps did we get in in uh, race two? Was it one? Uh, yeah, it one was lap. Only, it was two pretty well, much on yeah. this one. So, uh, yeah, we'll take a step aside, and yeah, you want to see if Andrew Woodhouse can get uh, a full eight laps in uh, after the break. Martin Van Nusen order has definitely been uh, the man on form here. Can he make it three out of three? In the, in the iRacing MSA British Sim Races 4 and Renault Championship. It's coming up next.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Welcome back to Apex Racing TV and welcome back to Mount Panorama here in Bath in on Australia, I should say. Uh, the conditions have improved somewhat. Got a bit of sun bearing down on the circuit now as uh, Chen Bassi goes off in the warm-up session. And I'm back here with Alex Simpson again. Andrew Whithouse is in the car, hoping to negotiate uh, more than one-eighth distance in um, in a race three. And Alex, yeah, we we hope now we've got a bit of um, a bit of grip and a bit of temperature in the in the track now. The track temperature now up to 35 degrees. Yeah, um, well, let's hope so. So it's not that there isn't a grip, it's just that the tyres just take a while to get to the right temperature and pressure when it's so low. So it's just the opening lap or so that's really treacherous. So uh, this time should be a lot simpler uh, for the guys getting away. Hopefully we'll see a, a closer for first lap. Not too long to go in the warm-up session now. We've just gone to... A minute and a half to go. Good day so far for Martin van Lusenord. Uh, two wins after starting on the pole in race one and starting at the in our race two. Both occasions there. Got a bit of carnage in the first corner in race two where uh, Roy Faverke, who started on the front row, ended up uh, facing the wrong way. Ended up finishing towards the rear. Uh, I've completely forgotten who's uh, got the pole now for race two. Is it is it Reverke again, Alex, or is it? Um, I think it might actually, it might be even Kip, St it might be even Kip Stevens, I think. But uh, yeah, we'll wait and find out. We've just gone through a minute to go until uh, the third race of the day gets underway. Of course, four races in the Formula Renault Championship. It'll be Honig on pole, Adam, I believe. Oh, that was it. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah, I remember you were pretty happy about that sort of. Um, yeah, Honig will be on the pole, and uh, that'll be good for Faker Sim Sport Europe because they had Paul Denton on the pole position for race two. And uh, yeah, Honig will now be on the pole position for race three. Honig chasing that AM championship. And we had to the likes of Keith Lee, who's trying to go get as high as he can in the in the pro championship. Warm up just coming to an end now. Just literally what I was about to say right there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, within a moment, we'll be able to run you through the grid for the third race of the day here in the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Formula Renault Championship. On the pole position, then, it is Jos Honig. Second on the grid is uh, Kip Stevens. Third for Roy Verke. Fourth, Chen Bollock Bassi. Fifth, Rafe Cullinan. Sixth is Yannick Ongana. Seventh is John McCutchinson. Eighth is Paul Denton. Ninth, Jack Keefley. And tenth, Martin Van Lusenord. Eleventh is Stephen Baxter. And twelfth is Andrew Woodhouse, who has a nice view of the cars in front of him. Um, last position in on Thursday will definitely not be where Andrew Woodhouse is sitting now if we were to be racing at Bathurst. Uh, it would be all the way up towards the entry of the pit lane. Uh, there are so many cars still racing in the in the VSR TC. Well then, Alex, uh, Marcel van Lusenord, three out of three. Well, I think um, you know I think we'd like to see somebody get all four. I think that would be good. But um, yeah, also I hope like Jack or uh, Jim can um, give him a run for his money. Here we go then, race three. Green, green, green. Runs away here. Good start from Honig, straight away cuts off the attack from Kip Stevens. Ongana already trying to get past Cullinan. Good Chen Balabasi already trying to get past Averke into the first corner, and he does. Balabasi through into third position, Averke already struggling. Ongana might get through as well. Uh, uh, Cullinan trying to possibly make it three wide as well. We are all through cleanly here for the first time. Now up the mountain straight, the slip streaming starting to begin. John McCutchinson, John McCutchinson, oh dear me, John McCutchinson trying to get in the mix there as uh, Chen Balabasi goes through into second position past Kip Stevens. Yeah, good start for Jim. So this is the kind of race that's going to make it difficult for Martin with Jim a lot further up the front. So if he can get past um, Jos very quickly by the end of this lap, then I think it's going to be a real tough order. Martin's going to have to make some serious ground in this lap to um, be able to have a run at him right now. You can see he's tucked right up behind Jack Keithley. He's going to be desperate to not let him go as well while trying to make ground himself. Of course, the contact on the opening lap was good for Martin van Nusen in race two because it meant he was able to get a good five or six positions by the time we got to Skyline and the S's. But here we go, down the hill for the first time. Uh, Jos Honig leads, Bollock Bassi second. But only a tenth of a second between those two. 
as we go on our way towards Forest Elbow uh, on lap one of the race. And I'm sure Chemba's going to try and set him up perfectly here on the exit so he can get a slipstream. As a uh, problem for Kip Stevens, he was very slow on the exit there of the Forest Elbow, and that allows uh, Ongana for him to fill. Here comes Chem. Almost on the grass there as he gets past uh, Honig there. Should be clear by the time we get into the chase. Really does. So Chem Bonavassi hits the front. Honig not doing too much in the way of uh, trying to get back through. And the international driver through there. Keithley up the inside of McCutcheonson. Pond for Yoss Honig. What's happened to Alex? Oh, he's offered as well as Cullen then. Take a look back see what happened because he uh, had the spin. Honig now down in 11th. Cullen might have just done exactly the same as he did. Oh, on the power on the exit. And uh, did Cullen do the same thing? Pretty much. And no damage free for those. Oh, yeah, it's easy done. We get a bit of understeer, a bit of push from the car ahead, and tyres are still trying to come up to some sort of uh, temperature and pressure. Um, that really is where they're weak, so you just have to feather the throttle for the first lap. Very difficult when you're trying to race away. Beefily getting past, um, past Skip Stevens, the same for Martin Van Lusenhorn as well. Uh, the gap between Shem and Martin is 4.6 seconds. Uh, Martin Van Lusenhorn is quick, but I think if he spends too much longer behind Jack Keithley, then I think the chances of three out of three will be gone because Chen Balabasi is a very quick uh, driver in any car that you stick him in. And then Marcel Van Uzenor trying to get past Keithley as we go through McPhillamy Park. Look at the speed he's carrying. Almost bump drafting Keithley there as we go through the long left-hander. And now on our way towards Skyline, he's on the kerb. He keeps it still going on the track. <laughs> yeah, that push into the limit is Martin trying to put Jack under as much pressure as possible. Got to, he's got to go by this lap, hasn't he? Um, up to 5.3 now. Oh, oh, big mistake. Sideways from Keithley. Somehow he manages to hold on to that. I don't know how. Very, very impressive save. Major, major sideways there. But uh, lightning fast reactions from uh, Jack there. But um, he is going to lose the position, I think, because of it. And Yannick Hongen is crabbing. And he's off. Jeez. Well, the car was up. Well, the we did hear somebody hit the wall, so I can only assume that that's what that was. And um, Keithley has actually managed to hold on to it as well. So, in in fairness, it worked in his favour that little moment because it was just a straight drag race down the um, down the street rather than Martin picking up a whole load of toe and carrying extra speed. Longer well, has gone straight back to the pits after that one. It was in second position. But now this is the fight for second position. Car around in the background, you can see the smoke. Oh, that's Jim's, Kip Stevens. Oh, Jim's around as well. Oh, no, oh, the lead. That's going to make it a little bit more interesting. Oh, no, oh, it's the lead for Martin Van Lusenord, isn't it? <laughs> there he goes. As if he doesn't need it. Oh, well, there you go. Very Van Lusenor, much, he says. So. It's the front end. It's all, couldn't, all of a sudden become a very light, much easier. Well, Martin Van Lusenord now leads. Second, Jack Keefley. Third is Chambal at Basayu. Really had a uh, race free in the palm of his hand because the gap was about five seconds between himself and, and uh, Just a little bit further back, McCutcheonson, uh, Kip Stevens, very, very close oh, teammates there. Woodhouse. Someone mistake there for Woodhouse around. He was right in that little battle as well. Well, at least the car is clean. Just a bounce uh, in that formula. And I haven't, if he keeps going round, he'll end up getting reverse grid pole for race four, uh, which is a bit of an incentive. But um, yeah, it's all kicking off at the road. Uh, yeah, the two Prosim cars fighting it out for uh, what is 6th uh, and 7th, McCutchinson through and into 6th. And they're not too far away from the two Faker Simsport cars now, Denton and Baxter, who are fighting for that best of the rest position in 4th and 5th. It's probably the main battle at the moment because the top three are already starting to spread out. Pretty good. Pretty entertaining opening three laps of the race here. We're, not, we're one lap away from the half distance mark in uh, race three of the day. Biggest movers, no surprises here. Martin Van Lusenord at nine positions. Jack Keefley up seven. Uh, Stephen Baxter up six. And, um, and uh, Roy Verke now passing away with Kip Stevens. Yeah, that's Roy Verke. Baxter's going to get a run. He hasn't, so let's put your attention to Kip and Roy. I think it's already settled, I think. Alex, yeah, Roy through, kicked down to 8th uh, position now. 
Next up to get past uh, is Honig and uh, Cullinan. The fastest lap of the race, Martin Van Nuzenor, 2.02.1. Uh, not as quick as uh, some of his earlier laps that he's been turning around the circuit, of course, due to the, uh, the increase in the temperature of the track. But um, yeah, Keithley, credit to him, is, isn't letting him go. The gap's seven tenths of a second. He'll probably just tag along just about in the, in the slipstream. Well, he's out of the draft now. He needs to be within six tenths to, um, to get any extra momentum. So, great on fight. He needs the, um, the, the uphill section of the mountain of his life to try and get back in there. I think Martin just flying away. Um, pulled another tenth of a second through that sector. So, although good sector there. Good on the exit for um, Keithley. Wound that time back in. Just to nail it through this section. Might just get the draft. All yeah, about down downhill to now. Six temps. Hovering around half a second. What about this SS section of Martin Van Nuzen has been absolutely perfection through here. Up six temps now. We go through the S's up to seven temps as we go through the dipper. Up another two hundredths on the exits. Can he get it closed down Jack Keefley through Forest Elbow? You get, oh, Van Nuzenor has a little bit of a moment there. He has to go to the inside line. Not the line he would have wanted. And the gap uh, onto the onto the Conrad straight is seven tenths. Just missing out on the slipstream, I think, now, Jack Keefley. Yeah, and Jem just behind Jack in exactly the same position as well. So gaps are pretty evenly um, spread out there right now. And I think um, I don't think uh, Jem's done with this race either. I think he'll want to try and get back past Jack if he can. Looks like Jem has a picked up picked up a bit of damage, and then it magically repaired itself down the. Uh, down the Conrod straight, I thought for a brief moment he had a bit of front wing damage. Andrew Woodhouse is back in the pits as well, which is a shame because from what I could see, the car looked uh, drivable. Was it, Andrew? I'll hear from it wasn't until I hit the wall later on. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Oh, I just saw that you towed. Uh, I didn't see oh, I think it. I was getting a little excited, the fact that there were sort of six cars right in front of me and I could smell, I could smell a top five. But <laughs> I didn't see the ending move, maybe it's for the best I didn't job. see it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, there's always race four. Uh, well, there is. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I, I thought you were going to get a reverse grid pole because you, I thought you might just tour around at the back and finish in that, in that position. But, um, yeah. Uh, uh, to be honest, yeah, I, I, that was that was stupidity coming to the fore, really, because if I'd have just tooted around for the like, 60 or something in my poles. But it's probably a good job I wasn't. Really. <laughs> I've ended up like Kip Stevens, he's gone from um, front row of the grid down to 10th uh, position again. Yes. At 5 in the reps then, over the, over the halfway mark already here in race 3 and uh, Marcel Van Luzen already looks set to be taking race 3 unless he uh, makes any mistakes. Uh, Cembo Lovati, though, fastest lap of the race last time around, 202 dead uh, for him. So uh, might try and see his chances of getting past Keefley, which probably looks the more likely battle now inside the top three. And Keefley running very wide down the exit of the S's, Alex. Yeah, it didn't really cost him any time. Um, you can see Jim didn't close up, but he's where he needs to be, coming out, avoids the wall on the exit. Didn't quite get the exit he wanted, he's not carried the momentum. And I think um, it's going to take him a little while to wind up. He's still not faster than Jack down the straight at this point. So, yeah, poor exit. Um, just a little bit just pushed I think through there and um, yeah all he's going to do is close in this time by all hard on the brakes a little bit of disappearing and reappearing there from Chen Balabasi but the gap is now uh, just two temps as they go on their way into uh, Murray's for the for the fifth time and Luton all crosses the line there'll be three laps to go here very close hounding him and sliding his way in the exit of a Murray's there that's the lap of the race, 2.02.003. Just uh, six, temp, six thousandths of a second quicker than uh, Chem's fastest lap of the race. So Martin Van Nuzenor just marginally pipping Chem at the moment to the, the fastest lap award. Up the hill they go again. Down the mountain straight. And uh, Martin Van Nuzenor now has a 1.6 second advantage over, over the rest of the field. But Champ, I think he's going to have to wait to uh, maybe Forest Elbow to get anything done here. Um, overtake on the mountain section is extremely risky. Yeah, exactly that. Got a good exit coming up the hill as well. That was where Jack looked so strong earlier on chasing um, Martin. 
Now he's on a little bit of pressure. Not quite so easy. Nail that. Oh, maybe even brushed the wall there, um, uh, jo Jack Keefley. I can tell you this, uh, John McCutcheonson's crashed in his out. We'll have a look at replay that in a moment because these two are now descending their way through uh, the S's. With the dipper. Now on their way to Forest Elbow. So close to that inside wall there. And a little lock up there from Keefley. Look at Chem's run there. That is perfection by Chem Bollock Bassey. Yeah, much, much better. You can see he's already got the overspeed this time where it took him you know, almost to the end of the straight to be carrying more momentum. So close to the outside grass there. Uh, Chen Wallabassi, but it looks like uh, Keefley might be fighting back here. The faker car has got a bit of straight line speed still under it. Uh, Chen Wallabassi threw into second, going into uh, the chase for uh, lap six. Right, let's see what happens to John McCutchinson if we can. Uh, he is towed back to the pits, and uh, the pro sim, uh, who was running in sixth position at the time, uh, has met its end. Just trying to find out what happened to him. He's going up on his way towards the cutting. It all spins it, slides it, and the cameras don't help, but um, oh, he ends up parking it in the barrier. And Denton and Baxter, that battle's really calmed down a little bit. Oh, it's a spin in the background. That's going to work around. Oh, oh then he just tries Backs to spin it around and takes it into the wall. Oh, that's one of those moments you hope that you're not seen on camera. Because, um, yep. Look like a doofus. Sorry, Roy. <laughs> Kapow, straight into the... <laughs> oh, oh uh, dear. Then two and a half men song comes to mind. Um, yeah, <laughs> going through the final corner. Uh, Roy Verke. <laughs> oh, dear. It's a bit like that MotoGP incident we saw practice at the weekend where uh, I've got which rider it is. He gets back on the bike and then ends up falling off it again and pulling away. Yeah, so, yeah. No offence, obviously, Roy, but that was quite funny. <laughs> Well, we've had that. We've had Alex Smolensky rolling the car over when during the Norch Life of Winter Series race that me and Wizzy commentated on, um, which caused us to try and calm ourselves down. Um, but yeah, one and a half laps to go here at, uh, at Bathurst in race three. We've got one more race to go after this one. Andrew Woodhouse is back on the track, actually. Um, and he's only one lap down. The reverse grid pole is on here. Maybe you listen to my advice. Maybe, that's, maybe, he's, maybe he does want the reverse grid pole. I don't know. Doing two on my screen, I have to say, Adam. Okay, there you go. My, my dreams be ruined. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah, it might get updated to two laps down by the time my news comes round. But um, yeah, he's going to come round and start the final lap of the race any moment now. Martin van Luzenord, he's got a gap up to 2.3 seconds. Let's see if he can set another fastest lap of the race here. Uh, we did a 2.02.065, only uh, six hundredths off another fastest lap. Can he get it into the 2.01s around a slightly hotter? Uh, Bathurst circuit 2019. There you go. Yeah, good lap there. Let's watch him as well go on board for the final lap of the race. Just watch the accuracy of the Dutchman as he uses every last inch of the circuit. Definitely a driver who fell in love with this Formula Renault when it came out and um, has never looked back. He's been strong literally from race number one and won that first um, I Racing Official Series Championship. the hill into Griffin's bend turn two. Two and a half second even Martin Van Nusen starts on the pole for race one. He ticked that race victory off straight away there. Uh, race two started at the back because of the reverse grid. They managed to work his way through. I think he gained about six positions by the end of the opening lap after a whole load of incidents occurred in turn one and then took the win there and uh, after taking a little bit of a while to get to the front after the mistake by Chen Balabassi in the first corner Martin Van Lord resumed his position at the front. He is just negotiating now. McPhillamy Park, that left-hander there. Then that's a Brock skyline. And the S's where you go plunging back down the hill on your way towards the Conrad Strait. With a dipper, left, right. And then uh, this quick flick left. Back over to the right-hand side for uh, Forest Elbow. Another downhill left-hander, very hard to get right. And get the speed judged well. Martin Van Nuzenor does just that and now Alex, is, now Alex is just on his way down down the Conrad straight for the final time. Yeah, great lap so far. Uh, full of confidence, Martin. He'll be keen to try and do the 4 for 4. They we've never seen it done. Graham Carroll came close. Uh, Martin Van Nuzenor, he'll be trying to get that fourth race victory as he goes through the final corners now. 
through the chase and the chicane and on his way to Murray's, the final corner. I wonder if he might try and set the fastest lap on the final lap as well because the, uh, the line does come up pretty quickly here. Through the final corner, check a flag on the ready. Race three, goes to Martin Van Lusenorn. 201.816, fastest lap to boot as well. Chen Balabasi takes second and Jack Keefe rounds on the podium. Chen Balabasi beats him to it though, Alex. 201.7, fastest oh. lap of the race for him on the last one. Uh, there you go, give it everything. Fourth of Paul Denton, Stephen Baxter fifth. Doss Honig going into the final corner now to take sixth. Rafe Cullinan will take that seventh position. Kip Stevens started on the front row. He is just going through uh, his run to the final few corners now to take what will be eight for the ProSim car. And then uh, we're just waiting on two more cars. Ninth will be uh, Roy Verke with a somewhat damaged front wing again after backing it, after fronting it, I should say, into, um, into the wall. And uh, then we're just waiting for Andrew Woodhouse. We'll get, oh dear, what's happened to the car now? Um, or maybe this is what happens. Maybe this is the, <laughs> maybe this is the crash that I didn't see. Um, resembling a, a car that Graham Carroll would drive, a Formula Ford here, um, as he goes down the straight. <laughs> oh dear. Um, well, he gets a bit of camera time here. He's the last car we're waiting on. This means he's doing a good job of controlling that, actually. Look at the crabbing and the lock that he's having to put on there. Well, the car's crabbing so much you'd expect to see it on the beach rather than on the, um, on the track. Through the final few corners for Andrew Woodhouse, where he will take 11th position. He will be two laps down, though, unfortunately, so uh, his efforts to get the car over the line will not result in a reverse grid pole. In the final corner he goes. There's the line, Woody. Just get over the line. And he does. 11th position. And it's a position as well. He gets past... Um, Gets past John McCutch. Oh no, I thought he had got past John McCutch, and he hasn't actually. So, yeah, eleventh place in the end for Andrew Woodhouse with Yannick Ongina, uh crashing on the back section of the of the mountain, and then um, and then crabbing, trying to get the car back, and then spinning out in front of the leaders down the the Conrad Straight. Yeah, pretty reasonable, um, pretty reasonable race to be honest. And um, yeah, top three very close all through that one, so battling well. And Paul Denton and Steve Baxter had their own little battle, so yeah, um, happy with that one. And Andrew Widdows will take some solace in the fact that he's gained uh, one position in that race, um, a plus one there. Will, will there be more in race four? Uh, no rhyming intended. You'll have to wait and find out because uh, we're going to take a quick break here on Apex Racing TV. We'll be getting set for race four of the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Formula Renault Championship.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Welcome back everybody to uh, to Mount Panorama Bathurst here for the final race of the day in the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Formula Renault Series. It's been three out of three for Martin Van Lusen or can he just top it off to make it four out of four? Graham Carroll's made it three out of four. No one has been able to complete the set just yet uh, in this series so far and Martin Van Lusen will be able to do that. Once again he'll be starting at the back of the field uh, due to the reverse grid. He'll be having to work his way through the field once again. Hopefully uh, the field in front can give him a bit of a run for his money. I'm sure the likes of Chen Balabasi and Jack Keefe will be trying to do everything they can to stop him. Adam Baff here with Alex Simpson, Andrew Woodhouse in the car once again. And uh, Alex, fourth and final race, Martin Van Lusenort. Um Yeah, trying to get it four out of four. Yeah, looking forward to see if he can do it. It's been close a few times for a few drivers this, uh, this season, so this could be the night that it's done. Um, yeah, tough old track. Um, to do it, that's for sure. And again, he's got to come through the pack, so um, be interesting to see. Temperatures look okay, mostly cloudy, so it's still a little bit tricky. So might have to avoid an accident or two on the first lap. It's cooled back down again. I think it was uh, 23 degrees for the opening two races. Those were in overcast conditions as Roy Verke loops the car around at the bottom of the hill. Um, we went up to about 30 or so degrees for race three, but now we are back down to 26 degrees again for race four. So. Even though uh, it looks slightly uh, clearer in terms of uh, sun shining down on the circuit, the conditions will still be pretty, pretty, pretty cold. I think as the drivers are starting to learn that, uh, judging by the amount of sliding. And Jesus, I mean, uh, that's Roy Verke's car that I've just seen there, uh, going up the straight. Where's my beat button? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's, it's ten o'clock now. It's, it's all good. Off the watershed, it's fine. Don't worry. Andrew Woodhouse um, spinning the car as well. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, that car with Boy Verke just caught me by surprise as he went up the straight there. Um, we'll move on and go through, run you through the grid. Quick, breathalyze him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I even missed that as well because I was too. You know what? You said what, exactly what I was thinking as I was spinning the car just then. Boy Verke is on the pole. <laughs> Kip Stevens in second. Rafe Cullinan in third. Jos Honig fourth. Stephen Baxter fifth. Sixth is um is uh, Stephen Baxter. Oh, no, it's Paul Denton actually. Jack Keefley seventh. Chen Balabasi eighth. Martin Van Lusen on ninth. Then John McCutcheon in tenth. Then it's Andrew Woodhouse in eleventh. And uh, Yannick Ongina in twelfth uh, position. So we've got Benelux's, Benelux drivers topping and tailing uh, our final race of the grid as uh, Chen Balabasi decides to go trigger happy with the with the uh, the chat responses on the um, on the iRacing chat. Well then, final race. Alex, um, predictions? I don't want to predict anything. I think <laughs> just going to curse beep, somebody. Beep, so yeah. Woodhouse right. for the win. There we go. Lights are on. Green, green, green. And now they're green. And it's a good start by Roy Verke. Kip Stevens. Lots into second, but he's still going to be kicking off behind, I think. Cullen and Honig going after you into the first corner. And around goes Stevens. Exit stage right, you could say. And uh, that is him down to last straight away as we go up the first, as we go up the mountain straight. Keep Stevens down to 12. Cullen and now up into second. Third is Jos Honig. Keith Lee is uh, in the mix there in fourth position. A good start from him. Massive Van Lusen on the three positions as well. He's trying to get past Keith Lee. Three wide almost in the background as we go into Griffin's Bend. Paul Denton, uh, sorry, Stephen Baxter trying to hold back Van Lusen all, and he does. A bit of breathing space between those two. Uh, Chen Bolle Bassi looks like he's had a bit of issues down at the Griffin's Bend. He's now dropped down to 11. Oh. Very wide for Verke. Yeah. He's under pressure. Rafe trying to find a way past, but just no way to go up that mountain. There's no room anywhere. He's trying to find their own bit of breathing space here. The top, the top six all nose to tail as we go through McFinley Park. Running out wide there, you are able to you are able to make sure that the car doesn't go into the wall. Now we're on our way to Brock Skyline. Up the inside goes Cullinan. Think, mate, think. As uh, we go down the hill and into the dipper for the first time. Jen Bolabasi just getting, uh, has overtaken Andrew Woodhouse, I'll just say. Uh, but now we're on our way towards Forest Elbow. And uh, Roy Verke has done a bit better than he has done in previous races. He started on the front row in race, in race two. Spun around on the exit in the first corner there. Race three, we saw what happened to him in the final corner. And now as we head down the Conroll straight for the first time, he's got a six-tenths of a second advantage. Just able to break the slip stream, I think, between him and Rafe Cullinan as we go towards the chase. Yeah, that's going to mean Cullinan's going to come under pressure from Honig, who's bringing along his teammate with him as well. Key sleep behind. Oh, um, Joss gets the run and through. Keithy can't make it through, he's going to have to wait another lap. Losing or just behind these guys. 
Something has happened between Ongina and Bol at Bassi, I think. But uh, here comes Cullinan up the inside. Oh, it checks up a bit. And Jack Keefley has all gone off. It's all kicking off here. Backs are getting passed by Martin Van Lusenord. He's now up into fifth position. Kip Stevens has just overtaken Andrew Woodhouse, who uh, is still going, actually. So There's a big uh, crash there, boys, on the, the, the main straight. And Bola Bassi and Yannick and Ongana, in most certain years, they are both out of the race. Uh, so Bola Bassi not going to be able to help Martin Van Lusenord. Well, try and battle him anyway, but here comes Honig for the race lead, Alex. Yeah, we're just watching, oh, we're trying to watch the replay. The overlay's crashed. Um, as soon as we can do that, we'll, we'll just, oh, yeah, just a bit of contact down the straight, wax them into each other. Dave Cullinan um. takes the lead. Martin Van Lusenord is now down to fifth. I mean, Voivoverke is down to fifth. Martin Van Lusenord up to fourth now as we go into the cutting. We'll Cut. get that as soon as the overlay comes back up. We'll try and get that over. <laughs> Go and get that replay. <laughs> but fortunately, when these things crash, a bit like that. So here we go then. So back to um, back to it. So end of that lap. Let's watch this um, unfold. Looks like the battle for last will continue right to the very end between uh, Kip Stevens and uh, Andrew Woodhouse. Honig making his move towards the front. Easy there as well, trying to get in. Also, um, along with him goes uh, Rafe, and then Rafe straight through as well. So just nailed that line through there perfectly. Gets the two places in one. That's how it all happens. So we'll get back to life. Down the back straight we go then. This is helping Martin Van Lutzenor because he's only eight tenths of a second off the lead. Here comes Honig. Here comes Keefley as well. The two teammates might try and forge a path to victory here. Keefley here trying to make it free wide. On the inside goes into the... Oh, Cullen and Lee through. Andrew Whithouse must have overtaken Kip Stevens. He must have just heard him there. Uh, but um, So those two batting away for uh, the uh, for the honours there. Into the final corner. Oh, Cullen and moving across. Keefley might get forced out and under pressure for Martin Van Lusenor now as they come across the line. Onto lap three of the race and... Look how close this is, Alex. This is brilliant. The top four fighting away for the lead. Yeah, this is what want for a final race of the night. Just six laps to go. Find it hard to think these are going to separate out. I mean, you can see the whole little pack that's remaining there still all in that same shot, which is um, pretty good going. Up the hill we go. Here comes Jack Keefley now on Rafe Cullinan. Cullinan trying his utmost to hold on to the second position, but it looks like Keefley might just get it done. Will he turn in in front of Cullinan? He's going to try. Oh, he's no grip out there at all. And instead of trying to get past Cullinan, he's just handed Martin Van Lusen on third position. You have to feel that if there's a driver that was going to hold Martin back, it could well have been Jack. So, a mistake there. Could well give him the um, the four and four. Not over and done with yet. We've seen drivers make mistakes. Oh. Anything can happen in front of Martin, of course. He could have one himself. And Martin was very wide there at the, at the cutting. And this has allowed uh, Jack Keefley back in back in with a fight here because Cullen will of course uh, no disrespect him will be holding these two up as they go through the S's oh, oh! Van Lusenord and around goes Honig two cars off and uh, another car off you'd almost think there was oil down there three yeah, cars in a on? heap back to involved well that is the four and four gone so another week we're denied no one can quite pull it off Honig is trying to get the car turned around thankfully Andrew Woodhouse and Kip Stevens are arriving on the scene to a pretty clear track uh, but yeah, what a disaster that is. And who's now leading the race? It's Rafe Cullen, and he's got a five second lead. All his Christmases have come at once. Jack Keefley dropping down the order as well. He's got damage. Yeah, of Jack course, hit, he has. Um, Martin didn't he quite heavily, so. And what this means then is Paul Denton's in second. Uh, tell you what, these, these guys are now all. This, these guys in the second pack, Alex, they're in for a big payday here. They've avoided all that carnage and they're on for podiums. And decent amount of points yeah absolutely I'll be happy with that just goes to show what can happen at this circuit at anything at any possible time well, McCutchinson was uh, is now through into third position he's just overtaken Roy Viverke uh, Marcel Van Lusenord is in fifth he's going to try and get the car home but uh, the foot there's, he's got definitely got aero damage there and that's Apex Racing Academy Live Reed Formula Renault uh, the only car that's had to retire as a result is Jos Honig. He's uh, towed back to the pits. This has elevated Kip Stevens into Jack Keefley. He's really suffering as well. Uh, Kip Stevens up to ninth. Andrew Woodhouse up to eighth position. Sorry. <laughs> and the mountain straight we go then. That four of the race. 
so much, in so much excitement and the race is only half half the race old. Right, Rafe Cullen and then the leads Paul Denton by five seconds. And it's John McCutcheons in third. Roy Verke in fourth. Martin Van Lusenord in fifth. Oh no. Like he's doing sixth and a problem for Andrew Woodhouse. Oh dear, he's over. And uh, Kip Stevens will have seen that. And I'm sure um, uh, this might be on. I hope this isn't ominous of, <laughs> of, of what could happen in Thursday. But Andrew Woodhouse now adds himself to the four retirements. And uh, oh dear, that was a. Uh, up in there, was that an understeery uh, moment or was that just a miss in the break? Just rubbish, just rubbish, I'm afraid. Sorry about that, just had uh, someone come in. Same old, same old, useless driving from myself. Okay, because Woodhouse will be back at Montreal and um, indeed with a 50 yes. car grid. Oh, what could possibly a, go wrong? What could possibly go <laughs> How hard can it be? How hard can it be? We should also mention that Andrew Woodhouse has just bought himself a new wheel, so um, testing it out now. That seems like a good excuse, that one. Just getting used to it. I'm sticking with it. And it was no, no it's not like it's You not only like jumped in during qualifying, after it's all. It's not like I drove the uh, Ferrari for like 15 hours at all, no. But no, the car, the car is good, it's just... It, it, yeah, I've not driven it for a long time, so... That's the oh. one excuse I have, I think. Both Colin and Oh, the oh. okay, around. Oh, well. Wow. Wow. Not quite around, just a little sideways spin. But, well, he's he, okay. but he went off here earlier and um, made a right mess of it. But uh, yeah, he's able to keep it all going there. I was about losing all that. Actually, he's getting closed in by uh, Stephen Baxter, I think, actually, now as we're on lap five of the race. Uh, Kip, Kip Stevens has actually done an overtake. Um, rather than getting passed by everyone in the field, he's been able to get past Jack Keefley, albeit uh, Keefley struggling around with the damage. Uh, but Kip Stevens now up to seventh position. Right then, uh, Paul Denton is slowly closing in on Rafe Cullinan. Last time around, he was seven tenths of a second quicker. Unfortunately, seven tenths of a second quicker of a lap by Mass there, it? say it's not going to be enough. So um, he might have to quickly get into the one second plus quicker than Rafe Cullinan if he wants any shot at taking the victory here. He is on his own, of course, uh, Paul Denton, so he doesn't have to worry about any attacks from behind. He just wins a pretty good pace. He might be in with a sniff of maybe stealing the race, the race victory away from Baxter Rafe out as well, big oh crash dear. for Baxter he was getting close to Martin some issues well, that's a McPhillamy Park exactly what happened there oh. well he had, the, he had the twitch he had the twitch of death he got the inside curb I think as well Alex oh no what's happened, oh no Rafe Cullinan Alex Rafe Cullinan oh dear <laughs> Rafe Cullinan who was in the lead with a 5 second advantage it isn't as dramatic as Baxter's exit it's we'll just have a, a look at that once we've seen this replay as well. It's just a little spin at Forest Elbow. Yeah, just hit the wall, push and around. Let's have a little look at this one then. Ah, oh, he just got it wrong. There's a horrible little crest in the middle of the circuit there. And um, yeah, that's what's happened. Baxter obviously, uh, sorry, Denton saw that and um, was able to take the wide line and pick up the race lead. Well, and then survives with minimal damage. Maybe he might even try and get the lead back from Paul Denton, but um, after seeing the lap times being set by uh, by Denton on that previous lap, it might be a foregone conclusion. Denton, 204-3 on that last lap. On to lap six of the race now, three to go. Uh, you can see John McCutcheonson in the background in third. Coming is in, still within uh, draft range. The gap is half a second up the mountain straight. So he might try and close back into the... Faker Simsport Europe car. We've only got seven cars left, by the way, out of the 12 that started, so we've almost had a 50% mortality rate here in the race. Oh, and there goes Cullinan. And that is a hit with the wall. Might be able to reverse it. Uh, he's got a bit of time before the next car comes along. And uh, that is him down to third and maybe down to fourth as through goes with Verke. Well, it could still be a good podium for Verke here. He's gonna, got a few laps to hold on to it. Ray's been doing better that time than he has. But Mark Hutchinson up to second place now. Also Van Luzenor now fancying his chances of getting past Cullen in here. Cullen just trying to regain his composure after a poor half a lap or so. He's having a look at Philly Park. He's still doing a, good, doing a good job, Martin Van Luzenor. Don't know what laps he's doing because the last few have been invalid. But his personal best for the race has been a 2.044. Cullen then goes wide in the wall. Back across into Van Luzenord, and that car is definitely not going to be 
getting any more positions anytime soon. Right? No. No, not at all. He might be able to finish the race, although the car is absolutely knackered. Um, and of course, finishing the race means he... No, maybe not. Um, means he will obviously pick up those points and he'll use those points as the um, entries into the raffle at the end of the season for the prizes. Oh, he's really struggling there down the Conrad Strait. Well, Rafe Cullinan, similar in a way to what happened with John McCutchinson. Car is remarkably intact after what happened there. And uh, yeah, he's carried on his merry way in uh, fourth position. Quite remarkable there. I don't know if it's the same on your screen, Alex, but um, both Cullinan, if there was any damage on the car, looks like it's magically repaired itself. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. So perhaps um, just, you know, wheel to sort of wheel to wheel contact saved him, but of course Martin hit the wall, didn't he? That was the problem there. He transferred all his negative energy. Um, in the car to, to Martin Van Luzenov, uh, it seems. Uh, I'm assuming Martin's going to have to pit. Uh, no, he's carrying on. He's a trooper. He's only got to do another uh, 12 kilometres with a car like that, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, some cars, some drivers definitely coming a cropper in this final race. That basically means that we've got six cars working uh, in this field. Pretty yeah, big one, really. I mean, it was that crash, wasn't it, where it took Martin and Jack and all that lot out all in one go. Three cars involved in that. One car that hasn't had any issues so far is Paul Denton, and he's got a four, oh, he's got a five-second lead over John McCutcheonson now as he negotiates McFillory Park and Brock Skyline for the penultimate time. Doesn't need to take too many risks now. He is he was two almost two seconds quicker than John on that last lap. Uh, yeah, all things going well. Uh, no major surprises. He's going to be on for taking a well-deserved victory here. Don't know whether he's got any wins to his name this season in uh, the Formula Renault. I'm not sure, actually. I don't think he has. So this could be first victory for him, which would be awesome. I don't want to tempt fate. We've still got one more lap to go. It can still happen. We've seen it happen to the best in this series in this fourth and final race. Out of the race, Yannick Ongina, one of the quick drivers from qualifying in race one of the day. Then uh, Chembola Bassi collided with uh, Yannick Ongina on the back straight. Andrew Woodhouse, uh, I'm going to say he's a, he's a quick driver, um, won a BSR TC race. I think that shows uh, really the capabilities. He was out earlier on as well. Uh, Jos Honig also bit the dust uh, in the mess at the Skyline S's section. And uh, Stephen Baxter also joined them after uh, what transpired there. Jack Keefley still going, he was involved as well. And uh, Kip Stevens then, the last car uh, really running. Martin van Nusenort, I think, has reached the limit. I think he's been disqualified, yeah. Yeah, I think he's out. Uh, so, I'm surprised he actually made it that far. The amount of damage done to the car, a few off-tracks was all it would need for him to reach that limit, and uh, he has done so, and uh, yeah, from the three, from right. the three victories. Give him his, uh, yeah, give him his dues. So the crazy thing is, is he's got three victories, one DNF. Some of the drivers out there that have had four finishes will probably outscore him for the race meeting tonight as well. That's how the BSR TC point system works. You just get a finish, you end up with substantially a huge amount of amount more points than you get if you just get a zero, uh, which probably makes sense. Uh, um, I think even if 12, the, the person that finishes in 12, Alex, I think it's probably got about 60 points if they were finished on the lead lap or so. Yeah. Um, so that shows you the sheer amount of difference in points here. Of course, the point system really modelled on the BSR TC where we do get uh, 50 cars week in, week out. So it's probably more relevant there. But once I've had losing odds, he will be getting a zero due to his disqualification. One person, he won't be getting a zero. He's just negotiated the... Uh, the Forest Elbow for the final time. It is Paul Denton. He's allowed John McCutchinson to close in a little bit over the last two laps or so. Just wants to make sure he gets it over the line. And what a win this will be for Faker at Simsport Europe. Paul Denton, the leader in the Pro-Ams. 450-point lead over Christian Rose, who wasn't taking part today. He did do qualifying and practice, but for some reason hasn't been taking part in the races. And with Jos Honig getting another zero here, He's going to extend the lead and take a victory as well. We believe this should be his first of the season and it will be a win for Faker Simsport Europe after the dominance of Apex Racing Academy here today. Paul Denton takes the checkered flag and wins the final race of the day here at Bathurst. Second will be John McCutchinson and Roy Viverke after the incidents and accidents he's had today. He's going to come through the final corner and take a podium for himself.
Both Cullinan will get fourth position after being involved with so much incident during the race. And then after that, it's going to be Kip Stevens, and we are in for a bit of a wait, Alex, because uh, Jack Keefley is only just coming out of Griffin's Ben now on his final lap. Yeah, absolutely. Just as well, not quite as much damage as Martin has, but yeah, we can see. So, but again, Jack knows the importance of getting the points. You know, that's why he's out there still trundling around. So, a lot of drivers would have parked it, but yeah, Jack knows. So key to his championship. It takes an unexpected fifth, I reckon, uh, for the Pro Sim team. Two cars inside the top five. I'll be happy with that. Yeah, well, considering he spun out on the first corner, first lap, and was dead last, you know, top five. Yeah, like you say, you're going to take that. It's good. But for Jack Keefley now, he's just going through the S's. May as well bring in Andrew Woodhouse here. Um, well, while it lasted again, a good battle, a relatively good battle with Kip Stevens. I know he managed to get the overtake. Yeah, it was quite good. Sorry, you just got me eating. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was quite good. I enjoyed it. That's pretty much all I can say is it didn't last as long as I would have liked. And uh, while Jack Keefley goes down the Conrod Strait, we can tell you that the BSR TC returns this Thursday. And what better circuit to go to, I reckon, than uh, the circuit Gilles Villeneuve in uh, Montreal, Canada. In uh, some very famous races in the past in the BSR TC. Uh, back in season seven, Andrew Woodhouse getting that win. Um, and many other, many other events happening. Uh, 62 grid slots available as well, so we can expect the full, uh, the full amount of cars on the grid. And then after that, we head to Le Mans on the 22nd of June. Of course, this is the week of the 24 hours of Le Mans. Practice uh, getting underway tomorrow, I, rec I, I believe. It'll be on the telly as uh, Jack Keefley comes through the final corner to take sixth position with a really severely handicapped car. And on that note, I think that pretty much drink brings uh, things to a close here. We can uh, we'll wait around for a little bit to see if we can uh, get any interviews. Of course, we have got one driver with us already in uh, Andrew Woodhouse. But um, yeah, Alex, uh, Bathurst is a, is a really tough, uh, tough track for these Formula Renaults. And uh, we saw all of them getting put through their paces here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, fully expected that today. Um, th you know, four really good races, um, different different races as well every time. So, um, so what we want? Well, we don't know where we're racing next week because of the BSR uh, schedule. Suzuka, yeah, you told me, didn't we? Um, yeah, Suzuka. That's a, that's a good, another good one, I reckon. Um, I, I think we were there a few weeks ago, actually, weren't we? Um, for Formula Renault. But uh, yeah, it'll be good to be back because, for memory, it was a pretty good race meeting there. Yeah, of course, we do follow the official series uh, where we can. Sometimes when they double up and we've missed a, an event, we'll go back to something else. But yeah, as far as I'm aware, it's Suzuka. Suzuka, this time next week, 8 p.m. British summer time. And of course, yeah, the BSRTC Thursday at uh, 7.30 uh, provisionally. Uh, we don't know whether the Porsches are going to be joining us for this new iRacing season. But uh, yeah, we'll find uh, out on Thursday. We'll find out on Thursday, yeah. Uh, so my well, thanks to Andrew for uh, for joining us. Um, shame it wasn't uh, shame it wasn't um, more than it was. Um, uh, thanks to Alex as always for being on the cameras and uh, for being in the comms box as well. And yeah, the next action on Apex Racing TV is Thursday night with the BSRTC uh, Circuit Gio Villeneuve. So that is it from here from all of us here at the Mount Panorama Circuit here in Bathurst. <laughs> as a, as a Kip Stevens bows out with a crash from all of us here at Apex Racing TV. It's good night from down under.